Uh, good morning everybody looks like it just uh, rained so that means probably I have to uh, wear my uh, water repellent jacket today anyways so today's plan is we're going to the uh, outer islands of the Venetian Lagoon and um, afterwards hopefully we're gonna have more time exploring uh, the city of Venice itself it, this is such a wonderful place and uh, yesterday had so much fun and uh, I wish I would have uh, stayed in Venice longer but I'll try my best there's always next time and I'm very excited to explore more of this amazing place today Well, only some travelers get to see Venice beyond Piazza San Marco and the Grand Canal. There are even less folks who see Venice beyond the main islands where the historic city center is located. We'll be taking the Vapoletti and visit three of them. Bulano, Torcello, and Milano. The Vapoletti stop for boats leaving for these three islands all depart from Fondamente Nove, around 15 minutes away on foot from the Reato Bridge. If you buy the multiple date Vapoletto Pass, normally these three islands plus Lido are included with your ticket. And that means you don't have to pay anything extra. Alright, what are we waiting for? Andiamo! From the Vapoletto stop, you see the island of San Michele, Venice's cemetery. Many famous people like scientist Christian Doppler and composer Igor Stravinsky were buried there. The island behind San Michele is Mulano, but we'll be saving our visit to Mulano until the last stop of our three islands getaway. The Vapoletto ride from Venice to Mulano takes about 45 minutes. Why don't we talk about how Venice well, became Venice. Following the fall of the western part of the Roman Empire in 476, some Roman citizens along the Adriatic coast refused to live under Ostrogothic rule, or according to them, the Barbarian rule, and escaped to the islands of the Venetian Lagoon. The settlements on islands north of Venice, such as Bulano and Torcello, are actually older than Venice because they were closer to the mainland. After passing by some islands that now have nothing but ruins, you see Bulano in the distance with the island's famous tilting campanile. The Vapoletto will pass by the island of Mazzorpo, and if you're not careful, you might mistaken it for Bulano. So make sure you pay attention. The bottom line is, even if you get off by accident, no need to worry, because this island is also connected to Bulano by a wooden bridge. You just need to walk a bit more than planned. Alright, so we just got into the uh, island of Burano and uh, so Burano is one of the uh, uh, outer islands in the Venetian Lagoon and uh, as you can see uh, this place is really quiet and peaceful well, not quiet so you can see there's still hordes of people and this is one of the most scenic 
Venetian outer islands here in the lagoon. And uh, Porano is famous for its lace making industry, but so far I feel like there is way more than just that. And we're gonna find out more. Let's go. Still, compared to the number of tourists in Venice, Burano was quiet. Burano is famous for its lace making industry. And many people simply came to the island to check out its lace. There is even a museum of lace there. However, I was not there to buy lace. Which, by the way, is pricey if you're buying the authentic ones. I was in Burano to see what people who stay in Venice only for a day miss, and whether I made the wrong choice of coming here. The finding was clear. So many people made the wrong call, and I wasn't one of them. One of the uh, landmarks here in Burano, as you can see in the background, and that's the town's campanile. And uh, you might have noticed that uh, it's not perpendicular to the ground. It's kind of like the leaning tower of uh, Burano. Probably that's because um, most of the places here in the Venetian lagoon, they were built on very soft foundation deep in the lagoon, uh, which of course, uh, after a long time, the foundation is going to shift due to water damage. That's probably why uh, it's uh, leaning right now. Bulano is just like Venice. The further you go, the less tourists you see. But also keep in mind that these places are where real people live. So leave as little trace as possible when you visit. Just imagine loads of tourists doing tourist stuff right in front of your own home. What would you think? Other than that, Burano gives you an idea of what Venice would have been if it never became a mercantilist powerhouse. A city without lavish mansions, just with humble yet colorful buildings that's still unique compared to all other towns and cities in the world. Since the campanile is actually a part of a church, and of course, we're gonna go inside and take a look. However, there was a mass inside the church at the moment. So I decided not to film as a way to pay respect. Bulano got more interesting the more I explored. I looked up the map on my phone and made the call that I would walk through every single street of this small island so I could truly appreciate this photographer's paradise in its entirety. Let me tell you, I wasn't disappointed.
Eventually, the back alleys took me back to the main street, where our exploration of Bolano started. Why don't we hop on a Vapoletto and head to the next island? Wait, there's something posted by the Vapoletto stop. What is it? <laughs> strike. A general strike notice for the Vapoletto system the next day? Despite it wouldn't really affect me. You will certainly take these factors into consideration when planning your trip, especially in Italy. Have plan B or even plan C in case situations like this happens. After a quick Vapoletto ride, we arrived in Torcello, where you could actually see from Bolano. All right, now I just got into Torcello. So this island looks a bit different from uh, all the other places we've been in Venice so far. And believe it or not, this is actually one of the first place to be settled by people when uh, the Roman Empire fell to the so-called barbarians uh, back in the fifth century. So Torcello was where everything started. Despite being the oldest settlement in a Venetian lagoon, Torcello appears to be abandoned today. This is because most of its inhabitants died from the various plagues that happened in the history, such as the Black Death and the settlement never recovered afterwards. Nowadays, there is only one thing in Torcello that most people come to this ghost town to see, Basilica di Santa Maria Assunta. This church is the oldest remaining building built on the islands of the Venetian Lagoon including the historic center of Venice, and was the seat of the Venetian bishop before the completion of Basilica di San Marco. Unfortunately, filming videos inside the basilica was not allowed. Here is a picture I found on the internet of the impressive mosaic I saw inside. The mosaics inside the Basilica di Santa Maria Assunta are some of the oldest in the Venice area. And I think it was well worth a visit if you decide to come to Torcello. You could also purchase a combo ticket that include climbing the church's campanile. You know what? I haven't done any clock tower climbing for a while. Why don't we do it this time? Well, that's actually a lot of work. Well, the thing is, I think it's almost the uh, time of the hour, so I better get off now. Otherwise, this will destroy my ears. <laughs> oh well, that pretty much concludes our visit to Torcello. If you're really looking for something else to do other than the Basilica, there are a few very good restaurants on the island. My rowing instructor recommended me this very nice taverna with a huge backyard and I want to recommend the same to you. I ordered some fried seafood loaded in a bowl that's also edible, which I totally forgot and threw away afterwards. Okay, let's try. Mm. Boy, this is good. And I also ordered this. Spaghetti alla vongole. All right, let's try the spaghetti here. Wow. For some reason, I think the food in Venice is way better than the other part of the Veneto region. All right, so that concludes our visit to Torcello. And uh, the Basilica was pretty impressive, I highly recommend. Actually, I forgot something. My instructor told me that you can actually eat the dish that contains the food. 
and I totally forgot. I guess it'll have to be next time. After bidding farewell to Torcello, we have arrived at our next and final stop of our Venetian Lagoon day trip. All right, we have reached our final stop of our Venetian Outer Islands trip, Murano. So Murano is world famous for the Venetian glass. This is the only place that produces authentic Venetian glass. As you can see, the surrounding, it looks more industrial. The reason is because uh, back in the days there was a fire hazard for the glass making industry. So the Venetian government purposely moved uh, the industry to this island and also as a way to uh, prevent the skilled craftsmen to uh, escape. So Morano glass is famous for its uh, good quality and of course uh, does it remind you of a certain SUV made by Nissan? So I'm not sure why Nissan names an SUV after this island. Is it something like it looks fragile but it's actually a tank inside? <laughs> Again, just like lace products made in Bulano, authentic Murano glasses are quite expensive. There are websites of glassmaker associations that can help you to find high quality glasses that were made in Murano. But you are not watching a shopping show. We are here to explore. Murano is huge compared to Torcello and Bolano. It is actually made up of several islands and even has more than one Vapoleto stops. I got off at Murano Faro and my plan was to see the main area and then end my visit at the Murano Corona Vapoleto stop. Following the main path along the water, I arrived at Duomo di Murano, Murano's main church. Maybe because I saw Bolano and Torcello already, the island's buildings and churches did not impress me at all. Bolano just felt like a less crowded version of Venice's northern neighborhoods, such as Canareggio and Castello. Anyways, now you've seen the video footages of all three islands. Whether Bolano should be skipped or not on your next trip to Venice, if you decide to tour islands of the lagoon, you make the call. So that concludes our trip to the uh, outer islands. If you ask me which one is the best, uh, I can tell you that uh, Durano is definitely the best of all three. So if you're short on time and can't visit everything, uh, I recommend you to check out Durano. And then since Torcello is not really far away and still smaller, so maybe combine uh, that trip with Murano. As for Murano, it's uh, the largest of the three, but it's kind of similar to what you see in Venice already. Uh, but it, it does have way less people, uh, especially in the late evening hours. Much of the day was already gone by the time I returned from the outer islands. However, our adventure will continue as we enter the last segment of our Venice trip. What else will we see? Follow me to the next episode.